Hi, and welcome to Java Programming Skills using Replit. I'm Norman McIntyre. Let's get started. Here we're going to look at the system class, and we're going to look at this method, current time millis. This returns the current millisecond uh, value. And this is really good when you're wanting to do timing in your code to take a snapshot of start at a given time and stop at a different different time and see how many milliseconds it took your code to run. So here we'll start out like we always do in our main application with the Hello World. And the new piece of information here, since we want to demonstrate using the current millisecond, we will have a a data type, we're going to declare a long data type. Now by long, a long, we, we've, we've talked about integers. We've been using integers so far in the videos. A long is just a bigger box. So think of an integer can hold a, uh, is a box that can hold numbers of a certain size long can hold even bigger numbers. And you don't have to worry about the details yet. Later in the course, I'll show you how you can find exactly how big is big. <laughs> but right now, we're just going to have something called long, and we'll call this start. So the name of our variable is going to be called start. And now we want to initialize start at the, the, the time we want to start this particular uh, timing. So I'm going to say start equals I'll go to the system class dot and I want to call a method current time millis. So that's the method current time millis. And what it will put inside of the long is the current millisecond time. In fact, we might want to see what that is. So we'll do system dot out dot print line and say, how about start? and show the value of long. You've probably picked up as you've watched these videos, I'm a big believer in just typing a few lines of code, clicking on run, and checking your current status, right? So I'm a big believer in doing that. In fact, I did that here, and of course, in my, you probably saw that error coming up. My purpose here was to show you if, let's continue, I just kept typing and typing, typing. I may have all kinds of errors. But if you just type a few lines of code and click on run, you can immediately see, oh, well, obviously I did that wrong. I put the, the type, the data type, instead of the variable. So it just makes it easier to just type a few lines of code and then run it and see how it looks. So keep that in mind. It's a good technique. And wow, that's a pretty big number, right? That's a pretty big number. And it's the number of milliseconds at this particular time when we, we took that. In fact, every time we run it, you'll see the number will change, right? Because time continues to tick on as we do this. So that gets the start time. Let's now get the stop time. So I'll say long stop. And this one, I'll go ahead and declare it and initialize it at the same time. So I'll do system dot the current time millis. So there we both initialized it well, we declared it and initialized it at the same time. And once again, we might want to do, well, let's, let's do the system.out.println. And here we'll say the stop. So we can see when the stop is. So I'll run this. And wow, we see that looking at the milliseconds, we definitely see here we we were uh, 0607 and here we're 06 and so basically 607 to 695 so even even going through that little those lines of code there we see that it, it was in the milliseconds um, as you write code it's good to have a ballpark feeling for how long it takes to execute things and we see that even now we've we've learned a little bit in fact why don't we do this? Let's go ahead and print out the difference between those. So I'll do system dot out print line and we'll say diff for the difference. And how we can get the difference is we can say let's take the start time 
and let's subtract the stop time. So start minus stop, all right? We, we, that was our initial time. Uh, actually, we want to go the other way. We'll say when we stopped, because that's going to be the bigger number, and then start will be the smaller number. So that'll, that'll tell us our difference, right? Minus, we're subtracting them. And now when we run it, we can actually see how many milliseconds before the start and the end. And notice here it was 135. Every time we run it, it'll probably be a few milliseconds difference. Right there, it was 85. I'll run it again. So it, it varies, right? But it's within this ballpark of some number of milliseconds. In fact, you could almost argue the machine is probably caching everything. And notice it's, it, it's fast sometimes, and other times it's, it's back to the slow. In fact, let's do this. Let's purposely... Let's purposely make the system wait for a second. Now, we're, we're going to have a whole section later in the course where we talk about threads. But right now, there is a class called Thread. So we've not seen this class before. But you know, my, my teaching style is when we need something, we learn it. <laughs> it's, if we need it, we learn it. So it's a little bit different from when you get a textbook and they go through all the possible things you could ever possibly know and you're like, wow, why am I learning all this I, all at one time? Here, we learn it when we need it. Well, we need to go to sleep. So thread.sleep, and you give it the number of milliseconds. So, so that will allow us to sleep that number of milliseconds. Now, before we do this, I'd say let's do our, let's update our start time. So what we'll do is grab this line here, and I'll copy and paste it right here. Okay, so that'll be our start time. Then we're going to sleep, and then I'll take our stop time. Notice how I'm taking advantage of being able to copy and paste. All right, so that's certainly a good thing, so I've copied and paste. We see we've got an error here, and notice it says an unhandled exception. Ah, unhandled exception. So that means we've got to, to handle uh, this, this exception. Uh, but I'll just ignore that for a moment. Click on Run. And, of course, we see the same error here. It says, unreported exception must be caught or declared to be thrown. Well, uh, in the, we had one of these earlier when we tried to read from standard in, and it also gave us an error saying you had to either catch it or declare it as being thrown. I typically like to do the catch, so I'm going to do a try. So that means we're going to try to do this. And what I'll say is I will catch, and I'm just going to catch any exception. So EX, and I realize we haven't talked about exceptions yet. We'll have a, a whole lesson later in the course uh, just on exceptions. But this is like the lowest most exception. It catches everything. So if we have an exception, and by the way, we will not in this particular example, but we're putting it here to get rid of this error. So I can do system.out.println and say that we want to print out the value of the exception, which again, we're not going to have an exception. But this is pretty cool because You've, you've learned a new skill here, thread.sleep is how you can make your code go to sleep. Now, you don't typically do that, right? You don't typically want your code to go to sleep. But this is an example. We want to demonstrate this milliseconds. What, if, if all goes like we're expecting, we should see the difference between start and, and stop. The difference should be um, uh, basically a 1,000 milliseconds. That is one second since a... A millisecond, one millis, uh, one second is a thousand milliseconds. So we'll print that out here. In fact, maybe we'll, yeah, we'll do that. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and put the, just so we'll be able to see them here. I'll put the, the start value, and I'll also put the stop value. Put that down here. And remember, you should be doing this same thing on your system. Always, always, as you're watching this code, pause the video when you need to and enter the code on your system because the true learning, I, I can guarantee you that true learning is when you type it in, not just watch me type it in.
but have you type it in and run it because you'll invariably have typos and, and other errors and that'll give you experience. So here we go. Here we did our, and notice we slept for, yeah, about a thousand milliseconds. That was pretty close, right? A thousand and two. Let's run it again. So the, the thread.sleep on line 14, it basically guarantees to sleep at least a thousand seconds, right? It may be a little more, but it should never be a little less. It should always be at least a thousand is how the, the sleep works. So there we've got a thousand and one. So great example of using the current time millis. And also we threw in for the first time ever, seeing how you can put your code. A thread, by the way, is literally a thread of execution. It turns out your Java code can have multiple threads. We're not worried about that right now. We're just focused on this single thread. But that's where the term comes from. It means that within your code, you could have more than one thread of execution running. Here, here we just have a single thread. And in fact, we make it go to sleep right there. So thank you for making it this far and yet another video. And as you can guess, there are more to come in the next video. More skills to learn. I'm Norman McIntyre. Thanks as always for watching.